War theory encompasses the study of the principles, strategies, and tactics used in warfare. The historical evolution of war theory can be traced back to ancient times. Early military thinkers like Sun Tzu in his work, The Art of War, emphasize the importance of strategy, deception, and flexibility in warfare. In the 19th century, Karl von Clausewitz's On War introduced the concept of war as an extension of politics and highlighted the significance of the fog of war and the center of gravity in military operations. The principles of war are fundamental guidelines that have been developed to assist military commanders in planning and conducting operations. There are nine commonly recognized principles of war. Objective, offensive, mass, economy of force, maneuver, unity of command, security, surprise, and simplicity. The principle of objective emphasizes the importance of having a clear and attainable goal in any military operation. For example, during the D-Day invasion of Normandy in World War II, the objective was to establish a foothold in Europe and begin the liberation of Nazi-occupied territories. The principle of offensive advocates for taking the initiative and maintaining the momentum of operations. The blitzkrieg tactics used by Germany in the early stages of World War II exemplify the effectiveness of offensive operations. The principle of mass involves concentrating combat power at the decisive point to achieve overwhelming force. The Battle of Kursk in 1943, one of the largest tank battles in history, demonstrated the successful application of mass by the Soviet Union against German forces. Economy of force refers to the efficient use of resources by allocating minimum essential combat power to secondary efforts. During the Gulf War in 1991, Coalition forces effectively used economy of force by focusing their main effort on the liberation of Kuwait while conducting supporting operations elsewhere. Maneuver is the principle that involves positioning forces to gain a tactical advantage over the enemy. The Battle of Cannae in 216 BC, where Hannibal's Carthaginian army encircled and annihilated a larger Roman force, is a classic example of successful maneuver. Unity of command ensures that all forces operate under a single commander with a unified strategy. The Allied command structure during World War II, led by General Dwight D. Eisenhower, exemplified the importance of unity of command in coordinating multinational forces. Security is the principle that emphasizes protecting one's own forces and maintaining operational secrecy. The success of Operation Overlord, the Allied invasion of Normandy, was partly due to the extensive security measures taken to deceive the Germans about the actual landing site. Surprise involves striking the enemy at a time or place they do not expect as demonstrated by the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941. Simplicity advocates for clear and uncomplicated plans to ensure effective execution. The straightforward plan of the Battle of Midway in 1942, where the U.S. Navy ambushed and defeated the Japanese fleet, highlights the importance of simplicity. War theory also categorizes warfare into different types based on the nature and conduct of operations. Conventional warfare involves the use of traditional military forces and tactics, such as infantry, armor, and artillery, in open battles. Unconventional warfare includes guerrilla tactics, insurgency, and counterinsurgency operations, often conducted by irregular forces. The Vietnam War is an example of unconventional warfare, where the Viet Cong used guerrilla tactics against us and South Vietnamese forces. Asymmetric warfare refers to conflicts between parties with significantly different military capabilities. It often involves non-state actors using unconventional methods to counter a more powerful adversary. The ongoing conflict in Afghanistan, where insurgent groups employ asymmetric tactics against coalition forces, illustrates this type of warfare. Cyber warfare is a modern form of conflict that involves the use of digital attacks to disrupt, damage, or gain control over an adversary's information systems. The 2007 cyber attacks on Estonia, attributed to state-sponsored actors, highlight the growing importance of cyber warfare in the 21st century. Expanding on examples from historical wars provides valuable insights into the application of war theory. World War II, for instance, offers numerous case studies of strategic and tactical decisions that shape the outcome of the conflict. The Battle of Stalingrad, a turning point in the war demonstrated the importance of urban warfare and the resilience of defending forces. The Vietnam War, on the other hand, highlighted the challenges of fighting an unconventional enemy and the limitations of conventional military power. 
Strategic planning in warfare involves the formulation of long-term and short-term goals to achieve military objectives. Strategy is the overarching plan that guides military operations and ensures the effective use of resources. Intelligence and reconnaissance play a crucial role in strategic planning by providing information about the enemy's capabilities, intentions, and movements. Accurate intelligence allows commanders to make informed decisions and anticipate the enemy's actions. Long-term strategic goals focus on achieving the overall objectives of a war, such as the defeat of an enemy nation or the occupation of a territory. These goals require careful planning and coordination of military, economic, and political resources. Short-term strategic goals, on the other hand, are specific objectives that contribute to the achievement of long-term goals. These may include the capture of key locations, the destruction of enemy forces, or the disruption of supply lines. Tactical maneuvers are the specific actions taken by military units to achieve strategic objectives. Tactics involve the deployment and movement of forces on the battlefield to gain a tactical advantage over the enemy. Common tactical maneuvers include flanking, envelopment, and fights. Flanking is a maneuver where forces attack the sides of an enemy formation to gain a positional advantage. The Battle of Marathon in 490 BC is an example of successful flanking, where the Greek forces attacked the flanks of the Persian army, leading to a decisive victory. Envelopment involves surrounding the enemy on multiple sides to cut off their escape routes and force their surrender. The Battle of Cannae in 216 BC, where Hannibal's Carthaginian army enveloped and annihilated a larger Roman force, is a classic example of this tactic. Feints are deceptive maneuvers intended to mislead the enemy about the true direction of an attack. During the Battle of Normandy in World War II, the Allies used feints to deceive the Germans about the actual landing site, contributing to the success of the D-Day invasion. Logistics and supply chain management are critical components of military operations. Logistics involves the planning and execution of the movement and maintenance of military forces. This includes the procurement, transportation, and distribution of supplies, equipment, and personnel. Effective logistics ensure that military units have the necessary resources to sustain operations and achieve their objectives. Historical examples highlight the importance of logistics in warfare. During the Napoleonic Wars, the French army's ability to live off the land and rapidly move supplies contributed to its initial successes. However, logistical failures during the Russian Campaign of 1812, where the French army faced severe shortages of food and supplies, led to a disastrous retreat. In contrast, the successful logistical planning of the Allied forces during the Normandy invasion ensured a steady flow of supplies and reinforcements enabling the establishment of a strong foothold in Europe. Modern advancements in military logistics have further enhanced the efficiency and effectiveness of supply chain management. The use of technology such as GPS and automated inventory systems allows for real-time tracking and management of supplies. Airlift and sea lift capabilities enable the rapid deployment of forces and equipment to distant locations. Additionally, the establishment of forward operating bases and pre-positioned stockpiles ensures that military units have access to essential resources in theater. Exploring related concepts provides a deeper understanding of strategic and tactical considerations in warfare. The concept of total war involves the mobilization of all available resources and the targeting of both military and civilian infrastructure to achieve victory. World War II is an example of total war, where nations mobilize their entire economies and populations for the war effort. In contrast, limited war involves the use of restricted resources and objectives, often to avoid escalation or to achieve specific political goals. The Korean War is an example of limited war, where the conflict was confined to the Korean Peninsula and did not escalate into a broader global conflict. The impact of technology on strategy and tactics is another important consideration. Technological advancements have transformed the nature of warfare introducing new weapons, communication systems, and surveillance capabilities. The development of tanks and mechanized infantry during World War I revolutionized ground warfare, leading to the emergence of blitzkrieg tactics in World War II. The advent of nuclear weapons introduced the concept of deterrence and mutually assured destruction, fundamentally altering strategic planning during the Cold War. Comparative analysis of different military doctrines provides insights into the diverse approaches to warfare. Western military doctrine, Influenced by thinkers like Clausewitz and Jomini, emphasizes the importance of decisive battles, the concentration of force, and the use of technology. Eastern military doctrine, influenced by Sun Tzu and Mao Zedong, focuses on flexibility, deception, and the use of irregular forces. 
The differences between these doctrines reflect the unique historical, cultural, and geopolitical contexts in which they developed. The psychological aspects of warfare have significant impacts on both soldiers and civilians. War can cause severe psychological trauma, including post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, depression, and anxiety. Soldiers often face intense stress and fear during combat, which can lead to long-term mental health issues. Civilians, especially those in conflict zones, experience trauma from violence, displacement, and loss of loved ones. Psychological warfare, which, 